Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent Nintendo slash gaming video for this week, for the week of July 12th to the 18th and all. And we got five stories to cover, including Devolver Digital and very interesting digital presentation to be exact. I do want to talk about the Stadia Connect that Google Stadia um, did. Um, a little bit on Ubisoft and their Ubisoft Ford. Um, Nintendo and Legos partnering up with a new Nintendo and Lego set which is interesting in a way but the price point has some people not very pleased about it. And rumors going around of not only Switch SKUs popping up on a pre-order for GameSpot, which could give us an indication that a Direct may might be coming though, but rumors are starting to pop out that F-Zero could happen though. So we'll get to all those stories in a bit, but before we get started, we'll get started with our quick My Two Cent part, and those are stories that caught my attention to a certain degree, but not going into a huge amount of details. Now the first one is that it's been reported that the upcoming remaster of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is not going to support um, offline multiplayer at all compared to how it was when the game originally came out on the GameCube and all. So obviously for any multiplayer you're going to have to do um, online and all that stuff. Some of it, at least according to what we've been hearing, is that the developers sort of like it, it wouldn't fit based on how they were doing the game or anything like that. Um, but either way, I'm still looking forward to that game, and it'll be interesting to see if other entries in the Crystal Chronicles series make their way over, including the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle Crystal Bear. I, I believe that's the name, though. I would be very interested to see if that game gets sort of a remaster treatment, though. We also learned that an anime based off of Capcom's Dragon Dogma is going to be coming to Netflix and it will be out on September 17th and all that stuff. Um, it's kind of interesting that they're doing this one and all and we'll see how well this one does. I mean, given how I d definitely enjoyed uh, the Netflix Castlevania series, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out and who knows? Hopefully, hopefully though, it does well enough to maybe convince Capcom to actually do maybe, oh I don't know, a Dragon Dogma 2. I know a lot of people like to see that. I've been playing the first Dragon Dogma on the Nintendo Switch and definitely enjoying the game. Though I definitely, I definitely would put it right next to other open world RPGs or other open world um, fancy type games like Breath of the Wild, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, and I will say, um, and even Skyrim as well. So hopefully, um, the, hopefully we'll see how well the anime does on Netflix and hopefully it does well enough to convince Capcom for a, to do a Dragon Dogma 2. We also learned that Nintendo just released some new games for their Nintendo Switch Online for the NES and Super NES Online. Um, only three games though, unfortunately, but the three ones are for the NES, The Immortal, and two are Nasrooms Championship Res Wrestling and Donkey Kong Country. Out of the three, I would say Donkey Kong Country is probably the big one for me. That was a great platformer back when it came out in 1994 though it was like one of the few games that really pushed the along with games like Star Fox though kind of pushed the visuals for the Super Nintendo um, at the time and it was definitely a fun game indeed I'm hoping that this also opens the door that we can finally get Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3 over on the Super Nintendo on uh, you know switch online server so hopefully we'll see more uh, hopefully those games will come, but either way, glad that Donkey Kong Country is um, as, is now on playable on the Nintendo Switch and all. We also learned that Ubisoft will be rebooting um, Skulls and Bones, as apparently it seems that they're sort of leaning towards more of it being a live service, which is kind of interesting because wasn't one of the reason Ghost Recon Breakpoint bombed because of you know maybe too many live services that Ubisoft was putting out though but we'll see wh whether this plays off or not and we'll see if this one sees the light or day or anything like that although many suspect that the game probably will be cancelled but who knows and last but not least um, the developers at Crytek put out a new trailer for Crisis for this time regarding the Switch version showing off what they have done with the Nintendo Switch version of Crisis. It's worth pointing out on the new trailer, they point out that it runs at 720p, 30 frames per second. And while that may not be 
the most idea choice for everybody. It's worth pointing out Saber Interactive is handling the Switchboard. And let's not forget this is the same team that handled Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on the Nintendo Switch, which also went docked ran at 720p 30 frames per second. So I have some faith in them and all that stuff, but I want to I still want to see how well this game runs on the um, Nintendo Switch um, nevertheless. <clears throat> Okay, uh, now that the quick might you sent part is now done, we'll get started with our first story. And this one has to do with Devolver Digital. You know, I got to give credit for Devolver Digital on, on, on a lot of things. They are known to put out some, well, interesting videos and all that stuff of their digital presentation. And this one, one well, it, it was something all right. It was definitely interesting to say the least and all that stuff. But despite despite their presentation, despite their presentation may see, seem odd for some people, they did have some games that they showed off that definitely caught my eye. Um, some of the games they showed off were basically that were Fall Guy Unlimited Knockout that's coming to the PS4. Um, they had also the game Carrion, C A R R I O N, um, which looks like you play as an alien going after other players and all that stuff. That's coming to the Switch, Xbox, and PC. They're saying July 23rd. Um, we have the harpoon based action game um, Ojai, O L I J A, um, which also looks interesting. So I'm glad that Devolver Digital is putting some of these games on the Switch. I mean, after all, I did enjoy. The Messenger and Katana Zero, I believe that's, I believe that's the name. I'm not 100% sure or anything like that. But for me, the probably the biggest ones though. Um, oh, and they also before I get to that one, they also showed off a Nightmare World of E3 called Devolver Land Expo that's available to free to download on Steam, which is okay. <laughs> it just seems weird. But for me, the biggest ones, the two biggest ones, at least in my view, um, were basically. Serious Sand 4 and Shadow Warriors 3. Those were probably the big ones uh, for me. Um, they didn't really show much that I think was already talked about about Serious Sand 4, but that's one of the games I'm looking forward to. I'm playing the Serious Sand collection on Stadia. I'm looking forward to picking this one up on Stadia when it comes out um, next month. We know it's also coming out PC via Steam. And Shadow Warriors 3 looks just fun over the top and and all that stuff and that's definitely another one I'm looking forward to um, getting. They haven't announced any platforms or anything like that but my guess is that obviously it's going to come to PC which isn't really surprising. Um, I could see it come to Stadia but we don't know 100% if that's going to happen or not. I mean if Series CM4 is coming to Stadia I have a feeling there's a good chance um, that Shadow Warriors 3 could make its way um, over and I wouldn't be surprised to see this on um, PS4 or Xbox One, although I would say more likely there's a chance we could see this on PS5 or Xbox Series X. And although odds are kind of slim on this one, I wouldn't mind if they, if assuming they could pull this off, assuming they could hit, assuming that any technical issues can be addressed, I wouldn't mind seeing this on the Nintendo Switch if it could happen though. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to see Shadow Warriors one and two come to Nintendo Switch, but I wouldn't mind if they could pull off bringing Shadow Warriors 3 over to Nintendo Switch if that could happen, though. Um, overall, some interesting announcements from Devolver Digital. Um, their presentation, bizarre and weird, but still um, interesting to watch, um, nevertheless. One last thing I do want to point out, um, seeing how Devolver Digital has handled Serious Sam and Shadow Warriors, on the Shadow Warriors IP, and, and in my view, I think they've been handling it very well. It kind of makes me sort of wish to a certain degree that they would somehow get the rights for Duke Nukem from Gearbox. I mean, let's be honest. Gearbox hasn't really done anything with the Duke Nukem other than, what, Duke Nukem Forever, which wasn't loved by a lot of people. Not to mention, he's only been reduced to just cameos like from um, Bulletstorm to just the release of the Duke Nukem game that was released back in the... 90s and all that stuff. I just think it's time that, you know what, Devolver Digital should get the rights for Duke Nukem and let them have a shot at it. I mean, given how well, like I said, given how well they've handled Shadow Warriors and Sirius Sam, I think it's time maybe they should get their hands on the um, Duke Nukem um, franchise, though. <clears throat> 
Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with uh, Google Stadia and their Stadia Connect. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video, and this one it has to do with um, Google Stadia and the Stadia Connect. So obviously, so as some of you are aware, um, this week um, Google held their other their second Stadia Connect and all that stuff, and they had some interesting announcements to make. Um, nothing, I would say, based on my time watching it, nothing. I would say. It didn't blow me away in the way like Devolve or Digital did, but there were some pretty um, neat announcements though. Um, some of the games that I thought were kind of interesting that they announced were games like um, um, Outrunner, um, that one being developed by People Can Fly, the ones that did the excellent um, Bulletstorm um, for you know the P you know it was released on PC, the PS4. Xbox 360, and then later re-released for Switch, PS4. I mean, and, yeah, the PS3. And Xbox. Shoot, I must have been so shoot up by mistake. My bad. But anyway, they were the same ones that did Bulletstorm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This one looks kind of interesting, though. I am somewhat, to a certain degree, getting sort of like a Gears of Wars vibe to it to a certain extent. But they only showed like a look like just you know like a cinematic trailer. So I have to see more of the gameplay on that one. So. That one I have to see more of for that. We learned that Super Bomberman R Online is coming to Stadia. That's going to ha basically be like, you know, battle multiple people. I think like 64 players online. And it's going to take advantage of a new feature that Google has now introduced. Supposedly, it's called the Click to Play, which, if I'm reading this correctly, allows you to click a link from the content, cr content creators and to play the game that they're playing, which... I mean that's all nice and all and all that stuff, but I would have liked to see some some new features such as the ability to actually do a better job with the recording and it be able to upload it up to YouTube. I would like to see a them improve or at least improve some of their recording features like that. That would have been a better option and all that. That would have been a better thing to see. We also learn we learned of other games like Outcast, which is sort of a cutesy um, multiplayer type of a game. Um, we learned that Hello Neighbors is coming. Um, that some of the games, some, some, I think the prequel and the original game are coming to Stadia. We learned that the Hitman trilogy is on its way. I think one, two, and three. Um, we saw several indie games like One Hand Clapping, which looks kind of interesting though, although I know that one supposedly is coming to the Nintendo Switch, so I'll keep my eye for that one. Um, they did show us about the their time exclusive, which is Orc Must Die 3, which is sort of a sort of a defense-like building game. I might try that one out. Um, they did announce that Sekiron Shadow Die Twice, uh, the game of the year last year, is going to be coming to Stadia, which is certainly nice. I mean, that was definitely a fun game last year. I'm very curious to see um, how well this game, how that well that game is going to run on Stadia, though, whether it will be able to hit the 60 frames per second or would be or just be a 30 like what Final Fantasy 15 and Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey was and finally we learned that they were also working on some also that Google snapped up some exclusives from both Harmonix and Supermassive. Harmonix obviously you know from the Rock Band Guitar Hero game while I think Supermassive is the one that worked on Until Dawn so interesting to see what they will be bringing to the table for Stadia and so forth. Um, overall, I have to say, um, like I said about it, this presentation, I thought, I mean, it was alright. I mean, there were some neat announcements. Sekiron Shall Die Twice coming to Google Stadia and so forth. So there were some neat announcements, but nothing, I would say, it didn't blow me away on the same level as what Devolve or Digital or at least surprised me in the way Devolve or Digital did. But it wasn't a bad presentation, though. There were some really, um, some really, really neat announcements and all that stuff. And it's going to be curious to see what the next, what the next Stadia Connect is going to hold, and what games we'll see more from um, Google Stadia and so forth. And it's going to be interesting to see next month once Series Sam Four comes out to see how well that game does on Google Stadia, since that's sort of a timed exclusive. Although it is worth pointing out, it's also coming to PC as well. So overall. 
I would say the Stadia, the Stadia Connect was, it was all right. Nothing, nothing, wasn't disappointed, but nothing that blew me out of the water or um, blew me out of the water or anything um, like that at all. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one has to do with um, Ubisoft and their so-called Ubisoft Forward presentation. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at um, Ubisoft. And supposedly they had their presentation, which was the whole Ubisoft um, forward, though. And they had basically some of the, they announced a couple of their games and so forth. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to watch it, though. I was hoping to try to watch it, but unfortunately a lot of things came up and... I chose to pick the Stadia Connect and Devolver digital presentation over the Ubisoft one. And well, judging from the responses from some of the announcements they made, I probably made the right decision as they didn't really, most of the stuff didn't really click with me. Maybe just one of the stuff did, but not really a whole lot. So in terms of what they announced at um, Ubisoft Forward, basically their announcement though, um, some of the announcements um, they did make was that we're getting another um, Just Dance um, 2020. Um, that basically, we'll have a tournament mode and all that stuff. I never really paid attention to um, Just Dance and all that stuff. But we know that one is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Um, same with um, a new update for supposedly tr Trial Rising and supposedly Brawl Ha Ha is basically coming to consoles and PC, but will be available on Android and ISO. Um, but other than that, we had announcement of The Crew 2 is being in development. Um, supposedly that's, um, oh no, basically um, a DLC for The Crew 2, um, more DLC for Division 2, Ghost Recon Breakpoint though. Um, they talked about um, Watch Dogs Legions, which is certainly not dead or anything like that. It was kind of interesting considering what happened last year with basically um, um, with Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where that game did so badly that Ubisoft had to rethink a lot of uh, stuff and all and all that stuff. And some games uh, possibly may have gotten the chopping block, though. We learned a little bit more about Assassin's Creed. Um, Valhalla, although supposedly a lot of the stuff had been leaked out um, already, though. I mean, it looks interesting, the game Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but I I'm not feeling as excited about that one, though. I mean, I might eventually get it, though, but it's not high on my radar at this time, though. And they also announced um, Far Cry 6 as well, but they only showed a cinematic trailer. We would have to see more like actual gameplay and all that stuff, but something tells me it's going to be kind of maybe somewhat similar to what Far Cry 5 is, but we'll have to wait and see how that one is going to be, though. They're aiming for a February 20, um, 21st on this one, though. Um, they also announced that Watch Dogs 2 is on free on PC at this moment, though, but you have to use, like, your Uplay account and all that stuff, and that's pretty much basically it. I mean... It, other than maybe hearing Far Cry 6, um, there wasn't really anything anything special about it, though. I just, based on what I read, it just didn't really click with me as much as, say, like, what the Stadia Connect or Devolver Digital one did, though. And the fact that they didn't really announce really a whole lot of things for the Nintendo Switch either is just, like... Okay, although they did claim that a second Ubisoft Forward is going to happen. We'll see how that one plays out. Maybe this one they'll have better announcements, but who knows. But my takeaway is based on what I've read about Ubisoft Forward, it's probably I wasn't really missing a whole much, whole lot of stuff in either case. I mean, I mean, Assassin's Creed Valhalla might be good, but like I said, I'll probably wait to get that one a little bit later. Far Cry 6, again... Might be good, but I have to see more. I have to see some actual um, gameplay. And the fact that they didn't talk about anything involving gods and monsters, other than that last story that we heard that Google accidentally leaked 
leaks. What looked like to be not the final version, all that stuff, that was a mistake on their part. And Ubisoft came out saying that the game has undergone some changes to a different name. It, it just makes me wonder if that game is basically dead or anything like that. Which, if it is, if it turns out to be, if that even turns out to be true, um, it's kind of a shame because the art style looked nice. Um, it had the potential of being good. The idea of it taking sort of had a little bit of a Breath of the Wild vibe to it, though. But it's just I wouldn't be surprised if they pull the plug on that one to be though on that one though. It would be a shame, but I wouldn't be shocked on it. So overall, uh, I wasn't really feeling it with the Ubisoft forward thing based on what I've read and all that stuff. Like I said, I thought the Stadia Connect and Devolver Digital's um, presentation would look like that that looked better than what Ubisoft um, did. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part four. And this one has to do with a new Lego set that Nintendo and Legos are doing. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a, another collaboration that Nintendo and Lego has done. This time, basically an actual NES Lego. Now, um, earlier this year, we learned about, earlier this year, Nintendo, or should I say, Nintendo showed off basically what is the Lego Super Mario, teaming up, teaming up with Legos and all that stuff. And basically what it is, is that you can sort of, kind of create your own legos create your own like mario level to a certain degree and all that stuff using lego mario but in a very interesting way it's basically that you ha use this mario type lego that looks extremely weird and you basically use what looks like these chips where you move mario around and he makes certain noises such as like coins or you know shoot fireballs or him catching on fire and all that stuff it's interesting, but kind of, it's odd, but sort of interesting at the same time. Well, we learned that Nintendo Lego sort of teamed up again, and this time in what is an, an, a unique sort of set, and that is basically a Lego um, NES set. Basically what it is, is that you actually recreate the original Nintendo Inter Inter Entertainment System, the NES back in, that was released back in the 80s, fond memories of it though, you basically recreate it with the exact Legos and all that stuff from the NES to the to the original NES controller to a to the cartridge itself to even a actual TV. That's right, you actually create the TV and all that, and it comes with the best basically a crane. And basically, what you do is you sort of this crane when you turn it, you can see like the original Super Mario Brothers and Mario moves around and all that stuff. Basically, it's a recreation of the first level and all. It's weird and bizarre, but kind of interesting at the same time and all that stuff. A couple things that we learned about it was basically um, how many pieces it was, how many pieces this thing needed though. And according to what we learned, this set contains about 2,664 pieces to basically recreate this whole Lego um, NES sort of thing. So make sure you don't lose any of the pieces and all that stuff. Um, we do now know, have some information of exactly um, when it's ba basically set to come out. Um, basically, it will launch on August 1st, the same day as the Super Mario set. And the price point for this one is set at $230. And, well, that's kind of expensive for something like this, though. And it's going to be interesting to see... Um, especially for to see which people will pick up the Super Mario one or this Lego one. It is worth pointing out that if you put, I think, the Lego Mario on top of the Lego TV, um, it will play the original song from the original Super Mario Brothers and all that stuff. However, it doesn't seem that not everyone is happy about the prices, though, and some have expressed, well, I won't say angry, super angry, but not pleased though. Some folks' comments have been like, "Legos is just freak. Legos is just freak, freaking ridiculous price." I'm sorry. Some people have responded to Lego NES is cool, but when you see the price tag, to some responding to, 
me that NES Lego set looks awesome. I want that. Also me oof when they see the price point and all that. So yeah, I can see where the price point might turn some people off. I, I mean, that's almost as close to how much like a regular Nintendo Switch is. So I, I can see there could be some concerns. Whether or not that turns people off or not, remains to be seen and we'll see how many people buy this not to mention i wouldn't be surprised if i hear stories of people who buy like more than one and then put it up on ebay at like ridiculous prices i mean come on we saw that with the nes mini and the super nes mini this will not i will not be shocked if i see something like this happen though so overall it's odd but also kind of interesting though i'm still a little surprised to see them not do something like say like a traditional Lego set or anything like that. Maybe they'll do something like that if they do something like a Legend of Zelda Lego set. That that would be interesting if they do that. But my takeaway from it is that, like I said, it's odd, but also interesting, interesting at the um, same time as well. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to our fifth and final part of this video. And this one has to do with rumors about the possibility that several SKU has popped up at GameStop, which could be an indication that it is possible this rumor about a Direct might be true, to even an interesting rumor in regardings of F-Zero. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fifth and final part of our Mind Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a interesting rumor has started to pop up. This involves not only some pre-orders for a Switch, but a game that we thought wouldn't see the light of day, but could be making a comeback. And that game is um, F-Zero. Now, it's been a while since we've heard any any like Nintendo Directs or anything like that. And while it is possible Nintendo had one plan during E3 and all that stuff, you know, or their digital presentation, given the whole situation, you know, with the whole coronavirus and so forth, obviously it threw everything out in the loop and all that stuff. So, and obviously some developers, and or at least from what I've heard, remember hearing, Nintendo tell them just go ahead, make the announcements for the Switch and so on. Well, recently we've been hearing reports that of a rumor going around that Nintendo might be planning a Direct for July um, 20th though. Whether that does happen or not, who knows? Bear in mind, it is a rumor, so anything should be taken with a grain of salt on this. But a recent report, if this is true though, could certainly adds more fuel to the fire to the fact that a Direct may be happening soon. Um, two articles to point out, and the first one from Nintendo Life, again, links are in the description. It reads that, quote, As you might have already heard, there have been rumors swirling around the internet for the past week about a possible Nintendo Direct broadcast taking place later this month on July 20th. It all stems from an insider who goes by the name of K-E-L-I-O-S on Reset Era, According to VGC, this user previously leaked accurate timing related to Nintendo Direct, including the Mini One, which took place earlier this year in March. Now to help fire up this rumor, a new batch of Switch SKUs have surfaced on GameStop's internal database. Um, and as they point out with the image that they're showing though, there are four unannounced Switch games on the list. Each one has a tentative release of of December 31st, 2020, most more than likely placeholder. So, and of course, the placeholder um, price of $59.99, $60. Um, the following GameStop notice um, about Nintendo America performing maintenance in on its retail integrated service on 14th July has also been doing around, but there's no guarantee that this is a connection to between this and the above listed. Um, SKUs. So whenever these rumors pop up about SKUs or anything like that, usually, not all the time, but usually it could mean basically that a, um, it means it could be that a direct is cer certainly around the corner and all that stuff. While that doesn't always happen all the time, it does give us, it could be a good indication that it is going to happen. Although it is possible that one of these SKUs could be that 
uh, Bakura, if I'm saying the name correctly, that was announced during Nintendo's Treehouse, which, let's just say that didn't get the best response from a lot of people and all that stuff. But what also could be adding fuel to the fire is a rumor going around about a possibility of not only like a Super Mario th like 35th anniversary type of games, but possibly a F-Zero game. One of Nintendo's racing games that really we haven't really seen any new entries of since like the days of the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance and all that stuff. But this new rumor m could be an indication that we might, might, I'm not 100% sure, so this is a grain of salt in this one. But anyway, according to an article from Game Rant, it reads that F it, according to them, their claim, the rumor points to F-Zero Switch game in development. It says, quote, a new rumor is making around online suggesting that Nintendo is gearing up to announce a new F-Zero game for the Nintendo Switch. It reads that, quote, while Mario Kart may get the most attention, Nintendo has another critically acclaimed racing franchise in its roster. But despite positive reviews, um, the F-Zero series has remained dormant since 2004's Japan-only F-Zero Climax on the Game Boy Advance. Now 16 years since the new since a new F-Zero game has been released and it looks like an announcement for an F-Zero Switch game may be right around the corner. Internet Sleuths, uh, Sleuths or S-L-E-U-T-H-S had discovered a private Twitter account with the handle of F-Zero JP which I assume that stands for Japan that appears to be associated with a Nintendo email account. This has led to speculation that Nintendo is preparing to announce a new F-Zero game for the Switch sooner rather than later. This account name is just a bunch of A's, which is identical to the Super Mario 35th Anniversary um, Twitter account that was discovered recently as well. This could lead to credibility that this credibility to this F-Zero Twitter account being legitimate, but it can also be a coordinated hoax, which that's that's always that could be a high possibility as well so fans should keep keep that in mind before getting their hopes up but if it's real it's an indication that nintendo may be planning to host a nintendo um direct soon um they also point out that this is the only evidence nintendo has plans on having a nintendo direct sometime in the near future they point out about the whole gamestop database so that was recently updated with new skus um you know um, we'll have to wait and see if this rumor turns out to be true, but I think it is time for another F-Zero game. Um, F-Zero at this point has been either reduced to something on like Nintendo Land when that was a launch title for the Wii U to um, a course on basically Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and all. But I think it's <clears throat> I think it's time that they bring out a new one as well. I mean, there are a lot of IPs that Nintendo has that I think would be a great opportunity to bring back to the um, Nintendo Switch. I mean, look at Luigi's Mansion 3. Look how well that has been doing on the um, Nintendo Switch. Same with Fire Emblem. Look how big of a comeback that series has started to make. So I really think that bringing something like F-Zero and maybe something like a Kid Icarus, that would be great too. I think this is a good opportunity for Nintendo to bring those um, series back. And I think that would be a great fit to bring over to the Nintendo Switch. Now, assuming an F-Zero game does exist, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not um, Nintendo's working on it. Or what would it be like, I think, what we saw with the F-Zero game that was released on the GameCube, um, in which... Um, Sega handled um, that game as well, so it's going to be interesting to see if they're developing it or someone else is to be exact, but I would say I would definitely be down with an F-Zero game making a comeback for the Nintendo Switch. So overall, right now, just a rumor at this time, we'll have to wait and see if it turns out to be true um, on the SKUs and the F-Zero one, but I do think this does, I do think, I do believe that it does give an indication that it is possible we may be, um, that a Nintendo Direct is going to happen. Whether or not it happens on July 20th or not, that remains to be seen. We'll have to wait until July 20th to see if it does happen. And if the F-Zero game does exist, um, that's good. I think it's time that series does, um, make a comeback indeed. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Devolver Digital's um, presentation? Was it 
bizarre, over the top? Is it what you expected? Were you pleased with some of the announcements they made of what games that they were going to be bringing over? Um, same thing with Ubisoft and the Stadia Connect. Um, were you happy with how Stadia Google handled their Stadia Connect? Were you pleased with some of their announcements? Were you not pleased? Um, what about Ubisoft's Ubisoft Forward? Would you were you happy with what Ubisoft showed, or were you disappointed in any way? And what what are your thoughts about this new Lego and Nintendo collaboration with this Lego NES though? Does this interest you in any way? Are you looking forward to picking this up though? Do you think 230 is way too much for this though, or do you think it's you think that's a fair price for something like this? And what are your thoughts about the rumors about these SKUs for the Switch popping up at GameStop and the rumors about F-Zero and all that stuff? Do you think this is an indication that a Nintendo Direct is, is going to happen soon? Or do you think some people are just blowing that way out of proportion and you don't expect that to happen? Do you think it's possible Nintendo could be making a brand new F-Zero game? And if that is true, do you think Nintendo's ha handling the development of that game? Or do you think they're going to do what they did with the F-Zero game on GameCube and have like another studio handle it, like how Sega handled um, that game to be exact? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, I um, then hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a um, good day then.